Good morning and welcome to worship at Broad Street United Methodist Church. We are so very happy for you to be joining us through the gift of technology on our website or on the radio. And we are very happy to be able to join together and be connected in this way on this blessed Holy Trinity uh, Sunday. So welcome, may you feel the peace of Christ wherever you are. We have a number of different ways in addition to worship that we live out the fullness of the Christian life. And so I wanna encourage you to come on the church Facebook page tonight at eight o'clock for the devotional that we're doing on courage, Jesus and the call to brave faith. Anybody is welcome to join us there for that study, which our small groups are also doing then we still have lots of need for shoes for the Back to School Bash, which has been one of the signature mission initiatives of Methodist churches here in the Statesville area, which will happen later in July. So I hope that you'll keep that outreach in your, in your heart and when you do your shopping. And then beginning this week, we are going to start a, a month-long church-wide Bible reading initiative. It'll start on the 1st of June, so it'll start day after tomorrow. And we have these um, guides there in the broad focus. You'll get it again in an email. Um, and they are also at the, at the table or at the church office. And we're inviting people to read these 30 selected passages through the month of June, and let's read it together as one church as we are going through this transition month. It's just a reminder of how church is not based on any individual, not a pastor or not anybody else, but that to, it gives us an opportunity to soak in God's Word. So we'll begin with Genesis 1 on Tuesday, and we hope that everybody will join us in that reading and you'll also see it posted on the website. So we would love very much for people to join with us as we bond together with the Word of God to prepare ourselves for the transition that is ahead of us. Grace and peace be yours in abundance as we celebrate the fullness of the Godhead this morning in worship. And no, no hymn probably is more explicit about the richness of God's presence than the longtime familiar holy, holy, holy. So will you sing with your hearts as well as your voices?
good afternoon to some of you. Good morning to some of you. Today, we're going to talk about having a birthday party. How many of you have ever had a birthday party? And what about when you had a birthday party? Who did you invite? Who? Um, my friends. You invited your friends. You didn't just invite anybody. You just invited your friends, right? And, uh-huh. I, I got, I, I found my friends too. Good. Well, today we're going to have a party, and it's a pirate and princess party. The boys are pirates, the girls are princesses. And as you can see, I've got this magic wand at Cinderella's, on Cinderella's royal table. So we got to meet Cinderella and got this little magic wand right here. Well, when you have a birthday party, what do you usually have that you share with other people? Candles, but what are the candles oh, on? Cakes. Birthday cake. And normally on the birthday cake, the candles, do that, does your parents just put 20 candles on it? No. How many candles? Three. Three, because that's how old you are. Well, I have one. I have, if there's a four, so you would have one like this. There's three, there's eight. Or maybe if you were older, somebody could do a three and a four, or a four and a three. And you can just keep using these. But usually, when people have a birthday party, they put a number of candles as to how old you are because we celebrate the day of your birth. Right. And what do people do? with the candles. What, you blow them out, but before you blow them out, what do people do? Happy birthday. Sing happy birthday. So we're going to sing happy birthday. You know why we're going to sing happy birthday? Because it's a joyful day, and I don't get to be with you on your birdays. So we're just going to sing happy birthday to everybody, okay? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear everybody. Happy birthday to you. Well, you know what? Today, at, uh, today is a very special day because all of you are here. But last Sunday was a very special day because it was a thing called Pentecost. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. And we celebrated big at church because we were so excited that the church had a birthday party. So we're extending that for this week too so we can do a birthday party with you, with princesses and pirates. Do you know the most important birthday that we celebrate? Jesus' birthday. Is that today? No. When is it? It's on Christmas Day. That is the most important birthday. Other than your birthday, that's the most important birthday that we celebrate. Yours is after Christmas? Right. My sister's after Christmas. Oh, well, some of you dressed up like pretty princesses. If not, you have a crown. Guys have a patch. But I have a very special pirate that I asked to come with me today. This is uh, Pirate Bob. He's actually my husband. So I'm going to ask Pirate Bob if he would to please say a little prayer for us. Okay. Yeah. Let's pray. So, Lord, thank you for this time and these special children and all they mean to you and so many others. That you will bless them and keep them and their families. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name we pray.
you pray with me? Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you exist in community. You exist in us, and you exist in our community. God, remind us of the strength of who you are. We feel lost, like we don't have a place to belong. We belong with you in union. God, when we feel all alone, remind us that you are with us. We are lost and directionless. Guide us in the way to go. And God, when you're, we're sure that we can make it on our own, remind us that we need others, that we need you to assist. God, sometimes we're hurt in ways we don't understand, and yet you do. Sometimes we're searching for things we don't even know we're looking for, and yet you do. God, whatever our needs right now, help us be reminded that you're the God of the earth, the sea, and the sky. That you're the God of all of creation. And that you love us. That you altered life. And you love us individually. Help us to draw courage, strength, hope. And God, help us to draw love for others from who you are. Help us be the church you want us to be. Help us to be the individuals you want us to be. Help us to be the community that you want us to be. God, continue to teach us how to pray, just like you did long ago when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever. Amen. Now we'll ask for offering. We're asking for money, and if you would like to contribute financially to our ministries, there's a link below this video in the, web, in the website there that you can click on to help support us. We're also asking for shoes for our back-to-school bash to give to kids who need shoes. We're also asking for you to work a little harder at loving your neighbor this week. Our offering is a chance to give back what God is asking of you. Let's take a little time and consider what that might be for us today. Oh, please, Lord, to God. 
Indeed, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Thank you. The epistle lesson for today, which is Trinity Sunday, is from Romans 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. And when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And if, in fact, we suffer with him, we may also be glorified with him. So I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, 
in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain freedom to the glory of the children of God. And we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for ad adoption, for the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we are saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with patience. This is a gift from God's Word Thanks be to God. Let us pray. How can we possibly gather up the rich inheritance that is ours through the fullness of the Godhead? Our, our limited minds strain with excitement to capture the fullness of all that is offered to us in our faith. And for all of us who are weighed down with difficulties and discouragements, with heartaches, and, and with a, a real sense of, of hopelessness about how things may or may not be working out, we, we offer all that up to you, O oh God of the Trinity. God of endless fullness, that through our attention, not to my words, but to your voice speaking in, through, and maybe in spite of what I say, that the rich fullness of the Godhead will assure our hearts of this extraordinary hope that is our inheritance in Christ. And so open our ears, our minds, and our hearts for the rich fullness that you intend for your children to have. Amen. Dear friends, Pentecost that celebrates the beginning of the church, it is the grand and glorious gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a spectacular moment, a life-changing time, and one of the best gifts of the church is to celebrate and keep perspective. So every year, immediately after this exotic, intoxicating, powerful coming of the Spirit, the church celebrates Trinity Sunday. We change from red to white. The, the scripture lessons change from those extraordinary moments that we celebrate at Pentecost. It is a lesson in perspective that such a precious opportunity we have to understand the fullness of God, it gets all the more rare in a world that goes after what is glorious and sensational and just wants to stay there. You know, when I was younger and much more ambitious about uh, Trinity Sunday, I thought Trinity Sunday was just a time for the pastor to explain the Trinity. God knows I have tried. <laughs> but just as, hopefully, you have looked back on things that you used to believe, I know now how foolish that was. Oh, I came up with all kinds of illustrations like St. Patrick's shamrock or that I was a daughter, a mother, and a preacher, all one person with different functions, or the roots, the vine, and, and the flowers of a plant but it was inadequate on two counts. That is, on one count, no preacher fully understands the Trinity. And it is a glorious mystery, I have learned, a mystery to be lived into and not a concept to be mastered. And the truth is that no sermon is ever going to really truly convey the majesty and the multiplicity of the Godhead. It is a mystery to be lived and embraced. It's a source of wonder and endless unfolding joy. 
Now, the Trinity is what we call a derivative doctrine. That is, there is no one place in the Bible that explains the Trinity. You need preachers to do that. <laughs> so I'm not really sure why I ever thought that I would be able to do so. But we know that the Spirit of God was brooding over the face of the deep chaos in Genesis 1. And that when human beings were created, God said, let us create humanity in our own image. Those plural pronouns are not mistakes. It, 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 it's almost universally understood that those plural pronouns belong in Genesis 1. Let us create humankind in our own image. They're not misinterpretations. They are decidedly plural. And Jesus talks a lot about unity with the Father, especially in his farewell discourse in John. And that he would send the Spirit and that he had done what the Father had told him. And the Acts of the Apostles, well, it could just as easily and probably more accurately be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The letters of the early church, they're full of references to God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So across the span of the Bible, the picture is given to us of a God who creates, of a Savior who redeems. And then the Spirit who empowers, guides, and sustains us. All of the realities are of the one true God. And so on this Trinity Sunday, we recognize that there is, so to speak, a team of the Godhead. Intimately interrelated in love. Not just God the Father creator pulling for us, claiming us in love, creating all that is good. Not just Jesus, Redeemer and Savior, who covers our sins and opens the door to both eternal and abundant life. And the Holy Spirit, comforter, sustainer, and empowering presence. God, who is interrelated, calls us into a marvelous, a majestic, a mysterious all-sufficient, life-changing relationship. And that's what Trinity Sunday is all about, immediately following all of the glory of Pentecost Day. In today's epistle text, Paul writes about what this gift of the Spirit means. The gift of the Spirit means that we are drawn into a unique relationship with this magnificent, multifaceted God, we are all children in a family. And so what if you learned, to your surprise, of relatives that you had never known of who died and left you as sole heirs of a big inheritance? How would you feel? What would you do? And how would that inheritance change the way you live? You know, one of the saddest stories I've ever heard, I'm, I'm told it's true, of a young man who had a dream of coming to America. He worked hard, and his family sacrificed a great deal for him to have enough money to purchase the ticket to come across the Atlantic Ocean. There was no way the family could ever have conceived of having enough money for everybody in the family to come. So they collectively sacrificed so that he as a teenage boy, with his whole life in front of him, would be able to make the trip and to grow into a fullness of life that wasn't possible for him in his native land. He packed everything he owned in a small bag, along with his hopes and dreams, and his mother baked his favorite rolls and made a stash for him to carry on the boat. Along the seven-day steamliner trip, he very carefully rationed the food that his mother had packed for them. He couldn't help as he walked through the ship to see the dining halls that were laden with tables of food, and he wistfully wished that he could eat there and have some of that magnificent spread. The bag which his mother packed had seemed like a lot when he left, but it did not seem like much as they got into the trip. In reality, 
all of her generosity and her work, it didn't last nearly as long as his hunger did. But by the end of the trip, he had gone for three and a half days without food. And although he got to America when he departed the ship, he was weak with hunger. And that must have been apparent as he departed the ship. And a member of the crew looked at the boy and asked if he was all right. And the boy replied that his mother's provisions had run out and he had not eaten for three days. He said he'd seen all the tables of food, but that the cost of the ticket had taken all of the resources that his family could muster and he didn't have additional money for food. The porter looked at that starving boy and he said, oh my dear boy, I am so sorry. You could have had all the food you wanted because the food is included in the price of the ticket. He was an heir to everything he needed, but he didn't know it. Romans 8 reminds us of that abundant inheritance that is ours, often an inheritance that we don't recognize. So this morning on Trinity Sunday, I invite us to be sure that we understand the rich inheritance that is ours. And Paul is saying in today's text that God calls us into a relationship, a direct and unique relationship. We are his children, beloved. And the full care and provisions of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are offered to us unreservedly with the goal that we will have a full and rich life. We need not starve or lack any of the sustaining provisions that God offers to us. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And Romans 8 shows us the many different delivery systems that our almighty God offers to us to sustain us and to enrich us and to bless us. So I'm back to the question that I asked earlier. If you learned that you had received a vast inheritance, what would your reaction be? Would you go ahead and live the way you had always lived? And if you needed something, would you go to the bank? And without touching the vast inheritance you had received, go ahead and, and go into debt for what you needed? Or on the other extreme, would you lavishly squander the marvelous inheritance that you had received? That is what Trinity Sunday is asking of us. God is inviting us to the fullness of the abundant life that God himself provides, Jesus spoke of, and the Holy Spirit testifies to. It is a banquet of provision. It rightly falls immediately after the Sunday that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit for Pentecost. God will provide all the resources we need in the multiplicity of the Godhead. We do not have to starve. And it is important that we not fall back into old ways of insecurity and anxiety and fear and resentment. This magnificent God of ours will indeed provide everything that we need. Let us pray. We cannot really begin to grasp the magnificence of the Trinity. As many different illustrations that as we would try to come up with, none of them will quite hold the vast container of your delivery system of eternal grace that is extended to us this morning. And so we thrill at the creativity of Almighty God and the power 
that we see not only over nature, but in the world, and we thank you for it. And we, with all of our hearts, are grateful for Jesus, who personified and showed us the heart and the saving power that you intend for your people to receive, for his healing, for his teaching that redeems us, and for his example that saves us from our sins. And on top of all of that, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which enlivens and inspires and comforts and convicts and sanctifies and helps us in everyday ways to live out this extraordinary inheritance, this banquet that is daily provided to us from the Godhead. We cannot begin to thank you enough. We thrill at the accounts of creation. We marvel at the, the life-changing power of Jesus Christ in resurrected glory and we were just blown away at the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And today, all of that comes together to reassure us of the fullness of your love for us, your presence with us, your continuing provisions for us. And so now, on this day, when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God the Creator in Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. We pray that we will step into the mystery with extraordinary joy, that no matter how many inadequacies or insufficiencies we have, that you have led us beyond all that we could ask, think, or dare to dream in today. Today we offer ourselves to drink in the fullness as much as we can of the Godhead and that we truly experience and open our hearts to the great fullness of Almighty God. Enlarge our hearts for all of the resources that you extend to us, that you might empower us, that you might make us whole, that you might fully redeem and lead us in every way. And with thankful hearts, we offer ourselves to that redemption. Amen. Music almost always conveys more of the richness of the scripture than words of even the most eloquent preachers can do. And so I invite you to one of the great hymns of the faith that, that reminds us of the extraordinary fullness of, of the inheritance that is ours. We need not starve in this world because a banquet of God's promises are truly prepared for us and available to us. And so with great joy, join us in singing Standing on the Promises.
Beloved, every year at Pentecost, I think, nothing can be better than the extraordinary story of the coming of the Spirit and we do it big. And I guess that the, the gift of Trinity Sunday to come immediately, not two weeks, three weeks, but immediately after, is to say that even for some of the highest celebrations we have in the church, there's more. There's always more. And that we can hardly begin to comprehend the gifts that God longs to give in the fullness of his capacity as Father and Son and Spirit, and really Trinity Sunday is an even greater Sunday than Pentecost Sunday, may it be so for each of us that the resources of God are so much bigger than even the magnificent event of Pentecost? Seriously? How can the church begin to capture that and show it? And may at least the flame of Pentecost from just last week begin to burn in your heart in such a powerful way that it ignites the very fullness of the Godhead that you may feel the rich and amazing and ever-present and powerful resources of Almighty God. It is indeed a great celebration. And may it bring you peace and power and healing and joy. Amen.